Gonzalo mentioned briefly the investment funds in Portugal that are uh, qualified to offer the golden visa, as in investing in those funds means you qualify to apply for a golden visa in Portugal. This is a really interesting and growing area. Uh, we've had several questions about this. So I have invited three of our uh, chamber members to join me on stage for a very brief explanation of how this works. Can I ask Michael Maxwell from Equity Capital, Ashish Saraf from Novi and Aretha, and Alex Laurie White to join me on stage, please, gentlemen. So if you want to come up the steps so health and safety doesn't. Uh, yeah. So sit anyway, yeah, that's fine. Thank you. So uh, two of our three panellists have flown in from Lisbon and one of them has flown in from Cambridge. Is that all right? <laughs> That's right. So gentlemen, welcome. Thank you very much for taking the time to join us. Um, now, uh, I'm going to start with Michael, I think. Michael in the middle here. Michael, Michael Maxwell, the Head of Business Development at Equity Capital. Now, Michael, tell us a little bit about yourself. What does uh, Equity do? What do you specialise in? Okay, thank you so much. Um, thanks all for attending. It's good to be here today. So I'm South African um, of Portuguese descent, so grew up with two nationalities and, and the language skills, which has come in handy. Um, coming out of 13 years with an international firm of, of lawyers and accountants, where I was very involved in the golden, golden visa space, and in fact the pioneering of the use of funds for golden visas. I made the connection on how these funds can be structured, to do real estate, I took that concept to a client of mine at the time and together we launched the first funds. Um, seeing the opportunity, that business we set up a fund manager and I was involved in setting up another six or seven funds after that. So end to end I've, I've been involved in um, around 10 different funds eligible for golden visas, uh, meaning when, when Equity Capital approached me about joining their team, I could really see what made them different. You know, and um, you know, quite frankly the 13 years I've been doing business in Portugal. It's not too often I've seen a team of that quality come together. I like the fact that Equity Capital um, were the initiators of um, and that the founding unit holders of any fund that's on their investment platform um, and took a different approach. So, so Equity Capital, um, besides advising the funds, are invested in it. Um, so they do have skin in the game. Um, and it's not one fund. You know, it was launched as two sub funds each one unique and different um, and investors were able to split between the two and almost build their own portfolio um, with, within the equity capital offering. So the business launched last year in April. Um, thankfully we, we had a very successful um, capital raising launch. Um, by the end of the year we had three funds essentially fully subscribed with two that have come in recently and the approach we've taken is a little bit different. Um, rather than being a developer that's you know, set up a fund looking to self-finance, we put together a platform. We started with five, it's actually now up to 20 uh, developers, where we get early access to projects that they launch. So essentially we look at those projects first, um, our own investment committee. Um, we get in early with a pre-built bulk purchase discount. Uh, we'd never take more than 20% of the units in any one project. Um, and that's because we're looking for diversification and um, getting in early of course you're cherry picking those unique units the ones that are always the most liquid the first to rent the first to sell um, something unique about them maybe they've got the biggest terrace or the best view but that's very much the ethos behind um, what we're doing you know um, so it's been very exciting um, good time you know timing works in our favor and um, we're seeing you know, that trend continuing uh, this year. Um, okay. um, Excellent. So clearly uh, the funds that Equity advises t uh, target uh, prime residential real estate in Portugal. Uh, second question to you, Michael, is um, how has Equity taken a different approach though from the other funds in Portugal? What is typically seen in Portugal and why is Equity doing it differently? Yeah, I, I touched on it earlier, I think. The a developer setting up a fund of their own to raise capital and deploy that into properties of theirs, irrespective of the track record of the developer, you know, there's naturally a conflict there, you know, and, and a lot of those projects, money's made when the, when, the prop, when the project is sold to the fund, you know, and, and they carry development risk, they carry construction risk, they carry sales risk. The approach we've taken with the platform 
diversifying across up to 20 developers, um, not taking development stage risk essentially, and that the properties being acquired um, have gone through a triple check system of governance, number one, from our investment committee presented to the fund manager's investment committee who have ultimate decision making ability that look at the fact that do those investments comply with the regulations of the fund, are we getting good commercial value on them, and then they would instruct the custodian bank to make the investment. So from a governance point of view, there's a very robust triple check system in place. But from a diversification point of view, it's not one developer. It's a portfolio of say up to 200 properties spread out across 15 to 20 of Portugal's best developers, and it's the literal cherry picking of the best units from the best developers in the best locations of Portugal. Okay, well thank you for that Michael, an interesting summary of what Equity Capital is doing. Um, I'd like to uh, ask our second panel member, Ashish Saraf, the founder of Novi.com and Aretha Portugal Vision Fund, to tell us just a little bit about what he's up to, uh, heavily involved in Portugal clearly, although you live in the UK now. Tell us, Ashish, a little bit about yourself. Uh, what, does, what is Novi doing and what is Aretha Portugal Vision Fund doing? Well, thank you for having me here, Christina. I'm the one who flew in from Cambridge. <laughs> uh, Novi is uh, one of the fastest growing fintech platforms in the UK, thankfully, uh, to all customers like you. Uh, we, are, we are essentially focused on fractional investing. We do a lot of UK buy to let and Portugal Vision Fund is uh, one of our in-house products, but we do leverage our capabilities in the UK market. And uh, as the gentleman before uh, us suggested, that uh, the CNVM Portuguese fund requirement is that 60% of the capital must be invested in Portugal. That gives us a great opportunity to invest the rest of the 40% in the UK market which we believe gives a very good balancing act to the investment, uh, especially after Brexit. And we focus on HMOs, we focus on tier two markets in East Anglia and Midlands and upwards, which gives us a much higher yield and, and a much higher capital appreciation. But overall, uh, as a platform, we believe in digital investing. Uh, Three fourths of our investors complete everything online without ever having spoken to me or anyone else on the team. <coughs> and because we start, the number is very low. It's working okay? Yeah. Yeah. So as I was saying, uh, three quarters of our investors are mostly retail investors uh, because the minimum on our platform is 10,000 pounds. So our experience is totally digital. Uh, please do sign up at novi.com. Every couple of months we have new deals coming up. Experience uh, the new ways of investing. In the next three months we are also launching our own NFTs, which is non-fungible tokens, which makes real estate much more liquid as an asset class. It's totally built on the blockchain technology. Uh, some of you might be aware, but I'm not going to bore you on that. Uh, but if you need any more information, I'm around. Okay, and um, what is the USP of the Portugal Vision Fund then? What's special about the Portugal Vision Fund? Why is it relevant to people in this room? I think for British investors, uh, the biggest USP is that 40% of the capital is invested back home in the UK. And the yields are better here, uh, especially in the HMO, student housing, and, and similar other segments, which kind of gives a balancing act on the overall five to seven year horizon. And I think that given the current circumstances, uh, ECB rates are going to be negative to zero, which means that the rental yields in most of Europe would not exceed uh, the early digits. Uh, and that further gives us an opportunity to get a better balanced portfolio for our investors. Okay, right, thank you very much, Ashish. Um, our third panel member uh, is Alex Laurie White. Uh, who is a private equity advisor for Pelotera. Now, this is a new member of the chamber. We were very intrigued by what Alex is up to in, in Portugal. So, Alex, tell us a little bit about Pelotera. I know you're a recent mover to Portugal. You've been in Portugal a couple of years now, haven't you? But it's really half, yes. caught, your, caught your attention. You live in Lisbon, and you've set up this fund, uh, all completely regulated, as all the funds we've been referring to are, under the Portuguese uh, rules. Tell us a little bit about uh, you and Pelotera. What's going on there? Sure. So, uh, thanks very much. 
Um, so I moved to Portugal two and a half years ago, and I was looking at the time to, to, to find a way to enter the sustainable agriculture space. It's something that I really wanted to, to spend my life working on, and as we know, agriculture is responsible for 20% of contribution to climate change, so it's a massive problem of, of our generation, of our age. It's some, something that I felt I could really get my teeth into for the next 20, 30 years. So we... Uh, Moving on to Pelotera, it's a, it's, a, it's a little bit of an odd one out in the market, or at least it, it used to be, because we come at things from a, from a different angle. So we, we, we quite accidentally found out about the Golden Visa space in a certain point in our development of the project and realised that uh, there were a huge number of investors coming into Portugal who, who were looking for places to park their cash, which was not only a very low risk, but also was in some way that they felt improving the country that they would perhaps one day call home. And so to be able to start a vehicle where we can have a positive environmental impact at the same time as maintaining a, a very low risk profile and returning on a pretty respectable basis as well. That was when, when we realised we, we had something. So we launched Pelantera a year, two years ago, a year and a half ago. Uh, last year was very successful for us, which was, which was really exciting because until that point it was really a hypothesis that this could be done. But partially with a lot of uh, interest from UK investors, it seems to be a cohort that are very interested in, in uh, investing in line with personal values that, that we've, uh, we've, we've taken off. And, and now we're very satisfied to see at the regulator that there are lots of other funds, uh, calling themselves ESG, green funds, following in our footsteps, which is really exciting for us because we can't keep raising forever. We'll, we'll be full in, in uh, four or five months. And so it would be nice to see some other projects taking on the mantle from there. Wonderful. Now, I know that the key asset class for your fund, the Pelotera Fund, is mm. farmland. Right. Just tell us very briefly, why farmland? What are you doing? Portuguese farmland. So, uh, I mean, in a word, uh, risk, really. R farmland is such a, a, a static priced asset. And so we, we, we're aware that the rest of the market um, focuses on, on, on an asset class that, that cycles up and down. So we, we can debate and we do debate as to whereabouts in that cycle we are. Um, but fundamentally, it cycles, and, and GB investors are, are coming in for a fixed, a fixed amount of time, let's call it seven years, and so to be exposed to something that goes uh, both up and down holds an inherent risk. Farmland pricing moves in a much more linear way, so we have 32 years of aggregated data on, on this, and there's not one down year in that time. So uh, the fact is that farmland's not going to set the world on fire, this is not a this is not a put 500 in, get 2 million out, it's, it's not, but it is something that you can be as, as near as sure as you ever are in investing that all of your money will still be there at the end and that we can generate a, a healthy return on the way. So, so risk is, is a huge one, the other one is, is environmental impact as well, so by working with communities in the interior of Portugal, by working on the land, working on shifting the needle in, in agriculture from more conventional to more regenerative, we're able to have a really significant impact on carbon sequestration across Portugal and on the health of the soil. And I will resist the urge to get into talking about soil health here because I feel I'll lose people. But um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a big one for, for food security, food nutrient density, water retention, etc., etc. So the, the environmental impacts are very real. Okay. So, gentlemen, thank you for that. Uh introduction from each of you about uh, the different businesses you're working on and the different funds. I'm just going to ask each one of you a question now uh, because we are sadly up against it time-wise. We're starting again in half an hour. Uh, so I'd like to ask each of you uh, uh, what do each of you think is the future of the Golden Visa program around Europe? Some questions are are being raised about whether post-Russia, post-Ukraine, uh, it will continue. Do you feel, uh, tell me, Ashish, what's your view about the next three or four or five years for the Golden Visa programme across Europe, of which Portugal is a, has many uh, Golden Visa applications? What, what's your view about it? Well, the European Parliament has already tabled a bill uh, which aims to phase out Golden Visas by end of the 2025. And, uh, that bill has a section which, or a subsection which aims to restrict commercial investments uh, between now and then. Now we don't know when this bill is going to get passed. But let's say, for instance, uh, if this bill is passed by December, mm. Golden Visa would still continue for two more years 
but it would have severe restriction on commercial investments. So as fund managers, I, all of us would have to divert our strategy to invest in the EU uh, sustainability fund, which is not a commercial investment. And these kind of uh, investment opportunities or citizenship by investment products have always been around. Mm. Uh, they call it donation, the Caribbean islands and, and stuff. But I think from fun, uh, as an asset manager, I'm not very comfortable with investing my funds money into a non-commercial investment. So it could be kind of tricky uh, for the next two to three years. But we'll have to wait and watch. We'll have to wait and watch. And Alex, do you have any particular predictions about uh, uh, Portugal and, and what the funds might do? Are you, are you fairly confident that funds in farmland and sustainable uh, areas will continue? Uh, what is your view yeah. on this? So, so we have um, one of the lovely things about last year for us was the overwhelming support we've received from politicians in Portugal, both on a lo local and national level. The, the fact of the matter is that the Golden Visa Programme in Portugal is controversial. The, the political scene is really split down the middle and so is the population along those lines. Yeah. And the reason for that is because you've got your sort of basic uh, right-wing economic stuff that trickle down what have you, money in the country is a good thing, and then you've got the other side of the table saying, well, where's this money going? It's high-rise flats, it's blah, 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 you know, same old arguments. So the idea of having a, a, of being able to channel that money in a way that affects the whole community from the ground up, from the farmland up, from the agricultural communities upwards, is a real breath of fresh air for those. And, it, and it, it's, a, it's a solution to a very polarized debate, which politicians from both sides have been jumping on uh, as a potential solution to this to this issue going forward. As we know, the EU is putting a lot of pressure on, on countries who run golden visa programs, but the EU also has very ambitious environmental and sustainability targets to hit. Mm -hmm. So the idea that we can use golden visas not just to solve political issues, or, well, there's a, there's a new term floating around, which is green visas. So we're now talking to uh, Portuguese politicians about, about introducing a green visa. They actually tried to do it a few years ago. They didn't have the right mechanism in place. It, it didn't take off, but now it's... Uh, it's back on the table and we're, 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 we're around yeah. that table talking okay. about that, so it's really exciting. Thank you, Alex. My, a final word to Michael. Michael, so equity is clearly in the f equity capital of your company, is clearly at the front of the space of high-end residential real estate. What's your view on, on the top quality real estate that, that equity is involved in? What's the, what do you think will happen with that over the next two to three years in Portugal? Yeah, I mean, clearly Portugal over the last five, six years has seen a significant uptake and increase in demand and the exciting thing is what's bringing people to Portugal is are things that Portugal's always offered in bucket loads. Mm. Quality of life, lifestyle, if you have to look at your sort of fundamental pillars of society or in life, what you value, safety, security, healthcare, infrastructure, education, um, climate, Portugal is a very comfy seven to nine out of ten on all of those things. You know, you could say, you know, London, amazing place, cost of living, 4 out of 10, weather, 5 out of 10. You know, Portugal, it's, it's, and no matter how busy you are there, you just can't shake the feeling that you're on holiday. You know, and, and that's, what, that's what's bringing people through. Um, there's a perception that it's a golden visa-driven market, but if you look at the hardcore stats of the 190,000 last year, only 1.5% of them went to golden visa buyers. So the other solid fundamentals that are driving the market. And the reality is, you know, everyone talks about demand. The reality is the bigger problem is actually supply. You've, it's true, you've never had bigger demand in Portugal, but at the same time, supply's never been lower. And that gap between demand and supply is just growing. And a new demographic we're seeing in the top three or four of investors in Portugal, just in the last year, all of a sudden are Americans. So we've had all this massive growth, which didn't involve American money up until a year ago. And that's just going to, you know, take it up another level. Um, but of course, fundamentally strong investors want to see fundamentally strong investments mm. um, hence the quality of the developer you buy from the quality of their, their their project looking closely at layouts extra services you know so i think developers are going to have to up their game to meet this more sophisticated market and demand okay very interesting panel thank you so much uh, for, for helping me understand more about what's going on so uh that concludes the seminar thank you for staying ladies and gentlemen and um, please go and talk to our, our speakers.